Hello everyone. Today in this video, we'll be discussing the second module of uh, VDI. In this uh, topic, uh, in this module, we have totally seven super important questions, which I'll be discussing. What all you need to write, and what are the key points and the architectures? Uh, how do you need to write? How do you remember the answers? Okay. So make sure you watch the video till the end. And before starting, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for uh, more videos like this. Your support will make uh, more videos like this. Okay. So let's get started. The first question is map reduce and its properties and example. Okay. What is map reduce? What the by that term you can understand that we are uh, mapping some. Something and then we are reducing something, right? These two things are happening. So, how do you exactly write the answer in your own words? Firstly, you have to define uh, the following terms. Mapper means something you are mapping from one object to another object. Okay, there will be a key, there will be a value you are mapping it. Reducer means you are reducing the complexity of the maps that is uh, happening. Aggregation means grouping the things. Querying means finding out something. And map reduce allows us to write the application reliably for the huge amounts of data. It uh, categorizes and uh, shortens it, and that to, uh, that's what the advantage of map reduce. And the features you have to write in your own words, like it uh, provides parallelization and uh, distribution of computer, and it um, makes the large amount of data processing in parallel, and uh, it is uh, scalable for a large number of servers and so on. Okay, this you can write in your own words. The good things about the map reduce. For an example, you can consider this example here. We have three sentences. Welcome to Hadoop class. Hadoop is good. Hadoop is bad okay now map reduce what it actually does is it will calculate how many times a particular word has appeared so for that it uh, does the following things there will be three sentences welcome to hadoop and uh, class hadoop is and uh, good hadoop is bad okay and it will separate it into different sentences okay after it has separated into different sentence in each of these sentence how many words have occurred how many times that is uh, getting written here then the same words are gathered together like uh, all the hadoops and all the class all the bad all the words are gathered together in a uh, single place and after that you are counting how many times it has appeared for example here it has appeared three times one 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 so you can directly write hadoop three and uh, in the final stage we'll just reduce it to the final output means all the things will be written in a single place that's about the map reduce okay and uh, moving on to the second super important question which is hadoop core components first you have to make this architecture four things are there common uh, libraries utilities yarn hdfs and map reduce repeat with me common libraries and utilities will come in middle yarn map reduce and hdfs distributed storage now what do uh, what do these terms mean uh, basically telling common libraries and utilities are those things which are required for execution those are present there yarn is used for the scheduling and the resource management hdfs is the storage purpose it uh, stores our different kinds of files Map reduce that's the same thing which we discussed in the previous question. And that same thing is uh, given here, you can go through it. After that, we have the third super important question, which is Hadoop Yarn execution. In Yarn, what it does is the following things. It is a management platform, a resource management platform. It manages the computer resources. It manages schedules for running the subtasks. Each subtask uses the resource in the allocated time interval. It separates the resource management and the processing components. And its full form is yet another resource negotiator. Like these things, it just manages and uh, handles the resources. Also, it allocates what time which process should be running. How does its execution happen? It's beautifully explained in this diagram. Client sends some request to the resource manager and gets the status of all of these node managers, application managers, and containers. These are the stuffs which we need to execute something. That uh, information will be given to resource manager and it will observe what task is to be done, how well it is to be done, and it will do the following stuffs. Okay. So the uh, writing of the part you have to start from here. List of um, Actions, the YARN resource allocation scheduling is uh, functional as follows. Master node has two components, job history server and resource manager. What will happen is first a client node submits the request of an application to the resource manager. Client will submit a request to resource manager. RM is the master. One RM exists per cluster. In one cluster, how many RM will be there? One RM. It keeps all information of the slates NM. NM is the node master. It's the slave. Okay. Information about the location, which is called as rack awareness. We'll discuss it in the upcoming question, super important question. And the number of resources like the data block and the server is also kept. RM renders the resource scheduler service and decides how to assign the uh, task to the each of the servers. After that is done, the multiple uh, node managers are uh, executed and they do, uh, perform some operations and application manager instance also do the same thing. After these things are done, it estimates how much time is required for running a particular program. And after all of this, it uh, performs the operation and sends the result to the client. Okay. That was about the um, <clears throat> uh, uh, YARN execution. Moving on, we have the fourth important question, which is Hadoop ecosystem tools. A simple way to memorize these uh, is uh, as follows. Okay, start from here. Pig, pig is what they live in some uh, dirty areas, right? Dirty areas they will be flowing somewhere, like a uh, very dirty area they will be flowing. So a high data, uh, level data flow language. In this way, have to remember. Okay, data flow language means what? The data is transformed to different form, and the execution happens. It's a framework for executing the data in different form. 
that is the pig hive means what bee hive you imagine it will be like this right there it can be called as data warehouse system it is the data warehouse used for the data aggregation summarization and skill scripting after these two you have to go to the cassandra <coughs> Cassandra looks like some galaxy, Milky Way galaxy, right? In that way, it is scalable and fault-tolerant database for multiple masters. HBase, obviously, you'll be using for scalable storage, which is structured data. Then you have to come to Flume and Scoop. These are two best friends. Flume will have for reliable data transfer. Scoop is used for the data transfer between data stores. Okay. After that, we have the Zookeeper. It will keep the coordination. Obviously, Zookeeper, what it does, coordinates, right? Coordination service. And Uzi, what it does, it packages the bundles and flows to the multiple coordinator. If you are memorize this one, it's sufficient for you. The rest of are also there. If you uh, can memorize that one, it will be helpful for you only. But this much uh, is sufficient for you. At least eight you have to write. Okay, that I've discussed. Moving on, we have the next super important question, which is explain rack awareness. What do you mean by rack awareness? What is uh, rack? Rack is nothing but something you'll be storing somewhere. That is called as rack. Awareness of rack means where you have stored what. That awareness is called as rack awareness. What you have to write in the exam is it uh, deals with the data locality. Where is the particular data store? Where is more accessible data stored? That is called as data locality. Uh, information about that is called as rack awareness. Recall that one of the main design goal of the Hadoop is map produced to make the data computation more easier. As you that the data uh, what we have in the center of the network is more accessible and uh, we'll be able to access it in different levels okay so three levels you have to mention the three levels are as follows data resides on the local machine this is the best way the second one is it resides on the name rack and the third one is it resides in a different rack okay that was about the um, rack awareness you just have to elaborate it using some examples moving on we have the next super important question which is uh, apache pig hive and uzi these are three most repeated ones so i am discussing this one what is pig pig is a scripting tool what is pig it's a scripting tool introduced as a way to quickly examine data both locally and on hadoop cluster for analyzing the data, we are using this one, which is um, Apache Pig. Okay, and it is a high-level language that enables programmers to write complex MapReduce. It is a scripting tool. It does the MapReduce program. It is a high-level language. Like this, you have to find out the points. Okay, as I read this, and Pig Latin is the language which is used for it. Fourth point for the transformation of data such as aggregate, join, and sort. What are the operation performed? Aggregate, join, and sort. Easily, you can put five points there. Okay, and these things. What are the different modes? This is optional for you. Then what is Hive? Hive is a query tool. It fetches some queries. That's all. So it accesses the files and stores the means uh, does the data extraction, transformation, and loading. And ETL means extraction, transformation, loading. You can uh, expand it and write in your own words. Query execution is uh, done by the MapReduce, which is the optimized MapReduce, also known as this. That is about the Hive and moving on we have the Uzi. What does Uzi do? It is a workflow director system designed to run and manage multiple related Apache hand Hadoop jobs. It will manage multiple Apache Hadoop jobs. Okay, that's the main concept here. The complete data input analysis may require several uh, jobs to run in a workflow. Don't consider uh, much of these things. You can write in onwards like it just constructs and manages the workflows. Constructs and manages the workflows. Multiple hand uh, Hadoop uh, jobs. It manages okay, and it uses the directory is like the graph of actions, uh, DAG of actions, and three works are permitted workflow coordinator and bundle. Moving on to the last super important question of this module, which is what are the YAN application? YAN is a resource manager uh, tool. What are its application? Which all uh, things use the YAN? That's what uh, the main concept is uh, defined here. So you have to make this diagram here. You have to mention some of the things like uh, MapReduce, Apache Tez, Apache Giraffe, and Apache Spark, HPC, and HBase. After you have done this much, it is uh, calling the resource manager, YAN resource manager. And that will be sent to the uh, Hadoop file system. First, it manages by using these tools and it sends to the file system system whatever it is uh, fetching after that much is done we will be seeing some of the concepts like uh, which use the um, yarn application of yarn first is the distributed shell what it does it is uh, demonstrate how to write applications on top of yarn for that uh, distributed shell is used map reduce we already discussed apache this is a uh, optimized map reduce uh, algorithm giraffe is used for the iterative graph processing hbase is used for the storage structured storage for the setup setting up of the files and all and spark is used for uh, keeping the data in memory improve the performance and additive algorithms this is used for uh, more better optimization of the storage and the processing and yeah that's all uh, what was there in the module uh, 2 make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one